I'd like to welcome you to the Shape Prevention Summit 2009, sponsored by Panasonic Corporation in conjunction with the Society for Heart Attack Prevention and Eradication, SHAPE, and the Society of Atherosclerosis Imaging and Prevention. I am pleased uh, to represent the uh, panel. Unfortunately, we're missing Dr. P.K. Shaw and Roger Blumenthal. Uh, Dr. Helk, Harvey Heck will uh, help me uh, moderate the uh, meeting with you. I have a few slides that are meant to be uh, a review of our uh, past uh, several years of uh, uh, holding these meetings. And uh, after that, I will pass on the podium to Dr. Falk to present the shape uh, uh, paradigm. And I also would like to uh, give you an update on where uh, we are with, with the SHAPE Task Force uh, and our activities. As you can see, the title of our meeting is a Screening the Asymptomatic Population from Guidelines to Legislation to Practice. Uh, last year when we were here, we were uh, hoping that we would be able to uh, present our case to Texas legislature uh, to consider uh, mandating uh, reimbursement for a screening. I'm pleased to uh, inform you, what some of you have not heard, that our efforts of uh, several years has come to fruition uh, thanks to Texas uh, legislator and Texas governor, now t state of Texas is the first state in the United States to have screening for asymptomatic uh, population uh, reimbursed and mandated and part of uh, our practice. So why are we here? The simple answer to this question is because we do not believe that the status quo, meaning losing a large uh, portion of people who could benefit from our knowledge and available tool uh, to go undetected and die either with sudden cardiac death or with later uh, complication of acute coronary events because the status quo misses them. There are a number of evidences now that were not available to us years ago uh, proving what I just stated, and that says the status quo, which is purely based on risk assessment using cardiovascular risk factors, grossly uh, misses a large portion of people who are at risk of a near future uh, cardiovascular event, which we consider them the vulnerable patient. This is the latest and the most important piece of information I personally consider uh, from reviewing years of literature, and this was published earlier this year in 2009, so you didn't see it last year when we presented. And in my opinion, this is the most convincing evidence though uh, the authors ne did not necessarily point this out, so I redrew the, the slides and, and the uh, figures of this paper. And it's very, very convincing because it's, a, it's the real life data. It's not research, it's not, it is research, but it's not a certain clinical trial selected study and with certain exclusion criteria. This is looking at people who come to emergency room with coronary artery disease diagnosed and look at their risk factors. Ironically, you'll see, as expected by the SHAPE Task Force report, 77% 70, 70, of them had normal LDL level according to the status quo and the current guideline. 
45 percent. This is 136,905 patients based on the American Heart Association's Get With the Guideline uh, database. This is no a small study. This is not a, a 200 or a 500 patient study. This is 130,000 patients. And the day before their event, if they had gone to their physician, they would have 77 percent of them would have con been considered as having normal LDL. Now you could immediately ask me how much, what percentage of them were treated with the statin or other lipid lowering, and whether they had different LDL level or lipid level comparing to those who were not treated. The authors had thought of this question as well, and they compared the two groups and found there was no significant differences. That means the treated group uh, were not quite uh, significantly different. So this is the problem, and triglyceride also 61 percent had normal triglyceride. So what does it tell us? We know that the majority of people who come with acute coronary syndrome first time, they had no prior event, and 62 percent in men, 42 percent in women are either presenting with cardiac death or uh, an MI, and that is what we consider unacceptable. In summary, we have two major problems in cardiology today. One is an accurate assessment of risk in an individual, the baseline risk. The second is inadequate monitoring of response to therapy. And the next two slides illustrates these two problems. This is what you would see as the picture of risk factor. Sir Winston Churchill, who uh, had all kind of bad food that you could imagine, smoked uh, the hell out of himself, and uh, was not uh, in good shape physically. And here is a man with the best aerobic and cardiopulmonary shape, uh, with uh, very much uh, anti-cardiovascular risk factor lifestyle, at least towards the end of uh, his life. And you see that uh, the outcome was quite different. Churchill lived to 91, and Jim Fix sadly died at age 53. Uh, these, of course, is symbolic, but uh, this is represented with the 136,000 uh, cases that I showed you. And this group, this uh, uh, slide, uh, represents their inadequate response to therapy, and that's what we are uh, about to address. So the two problems that we're aiming at are illustrated here. So we've had a number of uh, work that I'm going to uh, uh, walk through slide quickly uh, through the SHAPE task force and a number of brainstorming meeting and uh, uh, thought leaders in one room and trying to convince each other, but this is what we have come up with in that SHAPE uh, versus the status quo. The status quo tells you to screen for risk factors of atherosclerosis and treat risk factors. SHAPE says screen for atherosclerosis, which is the disease, regardless of risk factors, and treat based on the severity of the disease as well as the risk factors. So we've uh, identified a number of tools to uh, look into atherosclerosis out of many uh, ongoing and uh, studied tools, we have uh, identified two tests as the choice of tests for atherosclerosis. Coronary calcium and carotid IMT had the most studied evidence uh, convincing to the SHAPE task force, and I'm not going to go into details of this. Dr. Sh uh, Falk will uh, walk you through some of those. That the bottom line is, as you can see in step one, we identify the disease. Step two, we categorize them and evaluate the severity of the disease. And step three, we recommend treatment based on the severity of the disease. This was published in the American Journal of Cardiology with uh, a number of uh, uh, leading uh, cardiologists name. We've taken a lot of hits since then. A lot of us have been uh, uh, tagged as shameless self-promoters, uh, which uh, some of us are proud to be 
uh, indeed, because we're promoting a new thought that is against the status quo, and we believe it will change as time goes. There are some uh, very uh, distasteful factual evidence as well, and that is the status quo is really uh, using our national budget uh, disproportionately. We know that coronary heart disease or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which includes stroke as well, uh, kills a lot more cancer than cancer and uh, accidents and HIV. Uh, however, our national budget is not uh, proportionately uh, uh, distributed. You have uh, less than $100 spent for cardiovascular risk assessment and more than $1,000 is used for screening uh, the second uh, uh, cause of death. We have written extensively and we are all, uh, also uh, in the process of writing more uh, to that effect and, and championed uh, legislation for screening for atherosclerosis. Uh, this, uh, these are captured the screen by Dr. Falk. I didn't have these, but this was um, a, a very uh, historical time for us. Over uh, days and weeks, we were watching the website. Uh, this is Texas Legislator Online uh, Bill Stages, where uh, it passed after I testified in the con Congress, uh, passed the House and went to the Senate. It passed the Senate and went to the governor's office and we were very nervous this governor could easily veto this. He didn't care for much for uh, reading the scientific evidence behind this. And Dr. Falk was up late, late night, um, and he was the first who captured this. That's showing that uh, indeed the bill was passed and became law in the state of Texas to be the first state to adopt a screening for identification of asymptomatic population uh, for prevention of heart attack. This has uh, been set to the state of Texas insurance uh, practice effective uh, January 1st. Whoever is in the state of Texas we insured, will, the insurer has to pay for their carotid ultrasound or uh, coronary calcium imaging. And who are they? They are either male, this is again based on the SHAPE guideline, they're uh, either male older than 45 years or female older than 55 years. Uh, and so that's the entry criteria according to the SHAPE. They're either diabetic or they have intermediate or high uh, framing and risk score. The payment, as uh, it showed here, is up to $200. Uh, this is the first, and to many uh, uh, people, a giant step in investment in preventive cardiology. Uh, the two tests, as I said, are CT, uh, coronary calcium, and uh, ultrasound for carotid IMT. The SHAPE Task Force has done cost-effectiveness analysis as well and showed that through so many measures, uh, the shape uh, adoption of the shape practice can be cost effective and with this hypothetical measure could save up to $21 billion after adoption. And the approach is to start from the bottom of the pyramid and go towards the top of the pyramid. We have uh, put together our uh, evidence in the shape, the first shape textbook that is coming out this month and we look forward to expanding our uh, our message which is just like mammography and colorectal screening uh, for uh, screening asymptomatic uh, cancer we need to have asymptomatic atherosclerosis recognized as a disease and screened for and treat accordingly. With that I'd like to invite our first speaker, Dr. Erling Falk, to uh, take the podium. Also invite our uh, chairman, uh, Dr. Blumenthal. Please join us.